Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. We have an absolutely stunning, luxurious vehicle today. It's the Land Rover Discovery Metropolitan Edition. It's a three liter turbocharged diesel. Now, honestly, with this car, we can spend, I mean, the entire video just speaking about the technical aspects, but that's very easy for you to read. What I actually want to take you through in this video is how does it feel to drive this car? What kind of, a, of experience is it? Is it almost two million rands worth of extreme luxury is it everything it's hyped up to be that's what i'm going to tell you about in this video so firstly i have to say it's an absolutely stunning vehicle look at those visuals at the start i mean it just yo this car is very nice well the scenery was very nice too do you guys agree so this land rover discovery we said it's a three liter turbocharged diesel now it's a diesel but i promise you the only time you're gonna know it's a diesel is when you go fill up fuel it's absolutely silent and I mean, for a three liter turbo, it's got enough power. It's luxurious on the road. The feel, I mean, you got 22 inch wheels. So you're very high. You got off-road height. You got two off-road heights you can select. One is higher than the other. And the ground clearance you get is absolutely exceptional. And that actually allowed me very nicely to, to get to the part where I did that intro, that intro video. Look around the car, look at the, vi the visuals, look how high the car is. It's got all those drive modes, you have grass mode, gravel mode, uh, sand mode, wade, wade mode. And like I said in the previous Land Rover Defender, a mode for every day of the week. So the car is just under 2 million. So the base price is 1.896 and plus the optional extras, which comes to about 60 or 70,000. You're looking at about 1.97 million. Now this car, if you're looking at the interior, it's got a lot of like secret compartments also. If you look at the bottom here, you'll see you've got the cup holders and you can actually slide the cup holders forward and you've got a compartment at the bottom. I think that's quite ingenious. And then if you look here by the, your aircon buttons are, the silver button on top, you press it and then another compartment opens. It's, it's full of these compartments and the thought that went into this car is absolutely amazing. Now, you, you can bear in mind the price, so you would expect all these finer touches. So if you look at the dashboard, it's completely digital. You can select different layouts, like if you are using the navigator, which is quite accurate, I must add. On your dashboard, you can actually say, do you want the entire map to be shown? And you can see the whole map, or you can select, you wanna see two dials or one dial, your driver's assistance, you can put that on. There's a few other layouts you can choose. Another nice thing is if you look at the back, you can see at the back there, I'm pointing there, the one headrest, the passenger one at the back. Now, the headrests are quite high up. So if you do keep them up, it's going to spoil your, your vision. So what you can actually do from the infotainment system, you can click on a button, the seat button, and then you can either select folding or headrest. Now folding, that you can actually control the seats, the back seats, the, the, it's a seven seater. So the two at the back and in the middle row, you can actually fold them down from the front. And those headrests, you can actually, you can individually do it, or you can uh, do them all at once. You just say fold all headrests and all the headrests just drop. So let me just click it, click it now. There, did you guys see at the back? So initially when I did see that, I thought that, okay, that might be a disadvantage of the car because you have to actually manually go move the headrest down, but at least you can move it down while you're driving. So that's actually quite nice. Another thing is these seats are exceptionally comfortable. It is a lounge on wheels in terms of, I know I did this, uh, I did describe the, the carnival as a lounge on wheels. The reason I said the carnival was a lounge on wheels is because of the space it had, uh, being an MPV. But this one here, I'll say it's a lounge on wheels because of the absolute comfort. Not because there's a TV set in front, it's because the comfort. I mean, these seats, you, you can electronically adjust them. Like, you know, normal on the cars, you can go forward, back, up, down. Now here you can, uh, the lumbar region, the lumbar support at the bottom here of your back, lower back, you can adjust that. You can also adjust, if you, if you look this part here that hugs your body, you can actually adjust that and bring it inward so you can actually get hugged by the seat, which makes it even more comfortable. And to top it off, you got massage seats. I know I did mention the Opel Mokka, that does have massage seats, so you have to press a button at the bottom and you can massage. Now this one here takes it a step further. Firstly, you got massage seats for the driver and the passenger. You can select, you know, wave mode where it goes, uh, you know, throughout your back. You can select uh, if you just want lower back, if you want upper back, that's all settings. You can set the intensity from level one to five. I think that's really amazing. And like I said, you got it for the passenger as well. So the passenger doesn't, doesn't feel left out. Normally in, in many cars, they, they give you the electronically adjustable seats for the driver and maybe the massage for the driver. So all additional 
uh, features are only for the driver but in this car it's for the passenger and not only that you do have uh, ventilated and heated seats for the driver and the passenger and the people at the back so that's exceptional you can adjust the the temperatures at the back they can control their own air conditioner which is also nice a nice function to have you know everything to do in this car is is very easy to figure out so there's nothing that that you might struggle to figure out and you need the manual for unless maybe if you want to go into intimate details another thing that um that i that i like is when you control the sound around the car so the way you do it you don't you don't click a button to say do you want it in the front or the back there's a ball you can actually move the ball around you can move it to the driver you can move it to the passenger you can move it to the back on the left or the back on the right and you can even place it in the middle so you can put it in the middle back middle of the car middle front you can actually feel like a like a like a radio dj so you can actually i was doing it and and playing around so if i actually move the circle in circles you can actually hear the sound you know jumping around the car and that was actually quite fun what i wanted to actually highlight here is the user friendliness of the car it's easy to find what you need to do and it's quite intuitive where everything is situated on the infotainment system because sometimes infotainment systems can get quite complicated and what's even more frustrating is it takes you a very long time to figure out what to do but not in this case so you do have adaptive cruise control um everything about this car it's 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 very premium and it's easy to use so as you're using the adaptive cruise control i haven't read a manual on how to use it i just on the go i use it today and uh, am videoing today so i actually just figured everything out within a few seconds it is very very easy to use and user friendly the car has all the specs you, you want and more and what i like about it is it's a lot of things you'll actually use the one downside i would say is it is a seven seater so if you are making use of all seven seats then you do lose out a, a big time on the boot well you kind of don't have a boot but i'd say this car is very well suited for uh, like a family of five uh, with a decent sized boot in terms of fuel efficiency um i did take it on a fairly long drive today being a 3 liter turbo diesel a lot of power you wouldn't think it's fuel efficient but on the long road i was getting 8.5 liters generally uh, city driving was averaging between 10 to 13 and on the long road it went to 8.5 which was much better than the city driving do you guys have experience of 3 liter turbo diesels maybe if you could compare to the Toyota Fortuner i haven't driven a 3 liter turbo diesel or diesel in the Fortuner so i'm not sure how to compare if you guys uh, are watching and you you do know how you can compare you know this to some other diesel cars of you know a similar size and uh, power please comment below on what you think of the fuel consumption overall the car is extremely comfortable i haven't i mean i didn't go inside and do the whole full interior with the leg room i mean i have tested it out the seats are absolutely comfortable there's no problem in leg room head room in fact this car is so big you can say it got rooms the comfort level is absolutely premium fuel consumption is decent price is a, it's a bit on the pricey side but you're definitely getting you know a bang for your buck you're getting you're getting value for money if if you if you are on this range What do you guys think of the this Land Rover Discovery? Have you driven any other Land Rover Discoveries? If you are still watching, please subscribe to the channel. There is a 95% chance that you are not subscribed to the channel. Please subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. It will really help the channel grow. I'll really appreciate it. Share it with your friends and family. And I'll see you guys in next week's video.